Hi Geek Family! We wanted to take a few minutes and talk about one of the tools we use to help manage our kids' time on their electronics. Like many families today, we spend a lot of time on our electronic devices and it is often difficult to get our kids to switch off when it's time for homework, meals, or bed. We also want to monitor what they are viewing and how much time they are spending on their devices. The tool we're using for this task is Circle. You may have heard of it. In this video, we're going to show you some of the great features Circle offers, as well as point out some of the limitations. It's time to get our geek on. Before we get started, we're curious and would love your feedback on a couple of questions. One, do you currently monitor your kids' internet usage? And two, how much time do you allow your children to have on the internet each day? Please leave your answers in the comment section below. You might be asking, so what is Circle? Circle is a device that allows you to monitor every other device on your home network. Sounds a little like Big Brother, I know, but parenting in this technological world requires a little Orwellian oversight. The system monitors all of the traffic on your network and allows you to see what content is being accessed on any given device. With it, you can create a profile for each family member that allows you to filter content, set time limits, enforce bedtimes, or even pause internet access altogether. Circle also stores usage history. With this information, you can make informed decisions on the appropriate access and limitations to set for each network user. Now let's take a closer look at how to set up Circle. There are two parts to Circle, a physical device that connects to your network and an app that you download. Neither will work without the other. Fortunately, both are easy to set up. First, you will need to install the Circle app on your smartphone or tablet. The app is available for both iOS and Android, and you only need it on the device you will be using to control the system. For the physical device, you just plug it in. Once you have Circle powered up and the app installed on your smartphone, it's time to start setting it up. The app will guide you through getting Circle on your home Wi-Fi network. Here's a helpful tip before you get too far along. Once it's connected, Circle will scan your entire network. If you are like my family, you probably have a lot of devices on your network. All of your computers, tablets, and phones will of course show up. But so will connected devices like Roku's, Apple TVs, Chromecast, TVs, DVRs, cameras, and thermostats. It can be sometimes difficult to figure out which device is which on your network. Some devices will show up with friendly names like Dad's Phone and some will not. Many will show up with a strange series of letters and numbers like Android 123790QJV6Y. Who knows what that is? Circle makes it easy to rename devices with friendly names, but first you have to identify them. I recommend that you turn off every device you can before putting Circle on your network. Then once the system is set up, you can turn them on one at a time making it much easier to identify what they are and rename them to something you can remember and identify. Renaming a device in Circle is actually pretty simple. From the home screen, you will click the device icon in the upper right of the screen. This will take you to a list of available devices on your network. As you can see, some of ours have very friendly names like Galaxy Tab. Others do not, so we're going to choose this one here, 8525 something or other. Click on that device and it takes you into a screen that has some more information. You'll choose the device name field and click there. This takes you into a renaming screen that gives you the ability to delete the name that's there and type in something friendlier that you can remember. We're going to call this Microsoft Surface. Once you have the new name typed, click the checkbox in the upper right of the screen and that new name is now saved. So if you click the back button and go back into your list of devices, you no longer find 8525 something or other. Now you see it listed as Microsoft Surface. Now we're going to add a new profile. We'll choose Add Profile from the drop-down menu, and we're going to set one up for our dog, Luna. She's very tech-savvy. We'll choose from the preset filter settings. For, for the moment, we're going to give her the teen setting. We could change that later if needed. 
We won't set any limitations or bedtimes right now. We'll do that later. But we do need to choose her device. She has a PC. So we'll click that and choose Done. If she has more than one, we could add that as well. And now Luna has a profile. Now that Luna has a profile, we're going to go in and set some specific limits. We'll choose Luna and go to Time Limits and choose Enable. Once these are enabled, you can go in and set daily limits on internet usage. We'll start Luna off with, let's say, two and a half hours. That's her, a limit for her overall internet usage, but you can also choose limits on specific applications. For YouTube, we'll just give her one hour a day. Now, if you have a specific category of applications you only want to limit, you can also choose those. Luna's a bit of a music hound, so we want to limit her to 30 minutes of music a day. In time limits, you also have the ability to add weekend hours so that you have the option to be a little more lenient. So you'll choose Add Weekend and set the specific days you want to include in your weekend. When you click Done, it gives you, asks you to apply time limits for the weekend, and that just gives the same time limits as your weekdays. Now you'll click Weekend to change any particular limits that you'd like to. For Luna on the weekend, we'll give her an overall time limit of, let's say, four and a half hours. A quick save, and now all of her limits are set. Now that Luna's overall time limits are set, we want to give her a bedtime. So we'll choose bedtime and we'll enable it. First, we'll make it just for weeknights. So we're going to turn off Friday and Saturday night. For her weeknights, Luna needs to be in bed, let's say around 8.30. This means that after 8.30 p.m., she will no longer have access to the internet. We'll set her awake time at 7 a.m. So her internet will turn back on at 7 a.m. Now we'll go in and add a weekend. So Friday and Saturday nights, we're going to increase her bedtime to 10 p.m. We'll leave her awake time at 7 a.m. And now her bedtimes are set. Now we need to set up some off time for Luna. Off time is when the device no longer has access to the Internet. Let's say Luna has piano lessons. She's very gifted. We'll go into off times and set a off time for piano lessons on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That means we're going to remove Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and Sunday from this list. Her piano lessons are from 3.15 to 4.15 on those days. That means that she will stop having access at 3.15 and it will return at 4.15. And now the off time for piano lessons is set. We'd also like to add another off time for her. Luna has a few chores she needs to do. So again, we'll go into off times and add another time called chores. Now chores are really only on Saturday and Sunday, so we will remove all the other days except for Saturday and Sunday. And she doesn't really have that many chores. She just needs to pick up a few of her toys and straighten up a little bit. So We'll just give it an hour each day. So from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday, she will not have access to internet on her device. And now her particular off times are set. Now we're going to go in and customize Luna's filter settings. You remember we originally set her as teen, but we have several categories here that we can choose from. Pre-K, kid, teen, adult, and none. Each one has different restrictions, pre-K being the most restrictive and none, of course, the least. We're going to change her to kid. Uh, now, in this, there's a whole list of applications you can choose from. I don't want her going to TikTok or YouTube, so I'm going to make those not allowed. You can also choose specific categories. Since I don't want her downloading anything, I'm going to turn off app stores and downloads. You also have a setting for privacy and safety. We can turn on safe search and YouTube restricted if we want. If there's an item in the list that you don't know what it is, simply click on the name and it'll give you a brief description. 
Now we'll just choose Save and Luna's specific settings are set. Let's take a look at usage history. For this we're going to use the boy's profile. As you can see on this day he has been on Netflix for 1 hour and 50 minutes. Hmm, that's okay. If we go to the previous day, looks like he was on Netflix for 5 hours and 35 minutes. Well, that seems like a lot. We might want to rethink that. Fortunately, Circle gives you the ability to change that directly from here. So if you just choose the application, it gives you the ability to set things as not allowed, change your time limits, or just manage it in any way you need. One of the useful tools in Circle is the profile history. In here, you can see which sites were visited on any given day at any given time. You can also see uh, which sites were filtered. Now this means that uh, you're getting a list of which sites the user attempted to visit, but they were blocked by the filtering system. And from this section you can change your settings. So if you go to a particular website and click on it, it gives you the ability to visit the website or change your management settings specifically for that site. Circle also has the ability to give rewards. We're going to go into the boy's profile and choose reward and give him a late bedtime. He's had a great day today and we want to reward him. So his bedtime is usually 9.30 p.m. We're going to give him an extra 30 minutes and change it to 10 p.m. Now we'll choose send reward and his bedtime has been changed for just today. At the bottom of the home screen, there's a big pause button. And that's exactly what that button does. If you choose it, you pause internet access to all users and all devices on your network. By hitting the pause button again, you give them back their internet access. You can do this on a single user as well. Again, by going into their profile, simply clicking the pause button, you can turn off their access for all devices. And when you're ready to give access back, you hit the pause button again and they once again have access to internet. Now we're going to look at the management settings. So let's choose manage from the drop down menu. One of the items here is push notifications. When these are turned on, what it does is allow you to get a notification anytime any of these actions occur. The great thing here is that it's alerting you if someone is trying to tamper with your system. LockPin allows you to set a PIN number for your device. This would help prevent anyone from gaining access to your device and changing your settings without your knowledge. You can choose to back up your Circle profiles to your control device. The great thing here is that if you ever have to replace the physical Circle device on your network, you already have your profiles put together and you don't have to completely redo them. Support remote access is exactly that. This allows you to give access to Circle's support team should you need help with your device. Typically this would stay turned off You may need to disable your Circle device if you're troubleshooting something on your network and you want to rule the device out. You can also reboot the Circle device if it's having problems. And the great thing about these is that you can do any of them from remote. One of the better things about Circle is the cost. The device itself is $52.99 on Amazon, and you can take advantage of Prime shipping. Circle Home has no hidden costs. All of the features we've discussed are included, and the app is free on iOS and Android. Overall, Circle is a good solution for monitoring and limiting your kids' internet usage. 
It is probably the most complete and easy to use device in this category. There are a few things, however, that you need to be aware of that reduce the circle's effectiveness. First, it should be said that no device is a substitute for good parenting and common sense. Keeping an eye on what your kid is watching and what they are doing online is a must regardless of whether you use a monitoring device. Even with a device like Circle, you have to remember that today's kids are very tech savvy and some of them, especially your tweens and teens, can and will find ways around this kind of monitoring. Second, Circle is limited to monitoring devices on your wireless or wired network. If your child has a cell phone or tablet with cellular capabilities, they can simply switch the Wi-Fi off and use the cellular connection for their activities. Circle will no longer be able to monitor or filter their traffic. They do, however, offer a paid subscription service called Circle Go that addresses this issue. Circle Go is $4.99 per month and requires an app install on the monitored device in order to work its magic, something the free product does not need. I will leave a link in the description below with a detailed description of how Circle Go works. This should be an effective solution and at $4.95 a month is not too badly priced. I have not tried the solution myself so I cannot provide more info on that. Third, since Circle relies on Wi-Fi connection to monitor and limit internet usage, it is pretty easy to get around by simply connecting to another Wi-Fi. Be aware of any unsecured Wi-Fi access points that your child may be able to connect to. Your neighbor Bob may not mind if your son is using his Wi-Fi and may not think it is important to tell you. Fourth, the Internet History Monitoring section in Circle is limited to sites visited and time of day the site was accessed. It does not, however, provide details on what content has been viewed. For example, you can see that your daughter visited YouTube at 4.23 p.m. on Tuesday, but you cannot see what specific videos were watched. This seems like an oversight to us, and we're not sure why more detail is not provided. Five, shared and unsecured devices present a problem. If you have a family computer in the study, what filtering level do you apply to it? To protect your youngest family member, you would want to set the computer to their appropriate level. But by doing this, you inconvenience the adults in the household. In our house, our oldest has a computer that her younger brother could easily access. Because it is set to her teen filtering level, he would be able to view things that are turned off in his kid level. Now, you can, at any point, change the restriction level on a particular device. In our example, we could temporarily reassign our daughter's computer to her brother's filtering level. The downside is that you are constantly resetting the access level on one or more devices on the network. Not difficult, just time consuming and, at times, annoying. 6. There is a little bit of care and feeding for this device. Over time, your family will acquire new devices and potentially lose old ones. When this occurs, you will need to make sure you are adding and removing them in circle and that they are named and assigned appropriately. There will also be occasions where you need to review the filtering level for the users in your household and make any necessary adjustments. Again, this is not difficult, just takes a little time. 7. There are several other ways that your child may find to get around Circle. The help system can provide you with helpful information on spotting these attempts as well as some helpful hints on stopping them. You can access the help menu from the app and check out the section on stopping bypass attempts. One last thing. Before you purchase Circle, make sure that your router is compatible. Circle should work with most of today's routers, but there are exceptions. They maintain a compatibility list, and I will leave a link in the description below. Make sure you check it out. Also, it is a good practice to protect your router from tampering, so make sure the router you do have has a strong administrator password that only you know. I know, that sounds like a lot of negatives, but don't be discouraged. Most of the items we discussed are things to be aware of, not things that should prevent you from adding Circle to your home network. Overall, it is a great tool for managing your children's internet access, especially the younger members of your family. And because it is cloud-based, you have the ability to monitor and control Circle from anywhere you may be. You can reward your kids with extra time while on a date with your spouse, or even enforce bedtime and turn their access off while on a business trip in another state. We're happy that we've added Circle to our parenting toolbox. If you're interested in adding this system to your home network, we'll leave a link in the description below. Remember, if you purchase it through our affiliate link, you help us cover costs for our site 
so that we can continue to provide great content. Thanks for watching our review of Circle. If you're not already a part of our geek family, we would love for you to join us on our journey. Please take a moment to like and subscribe. And don't forget to click the notification bell so that you are always notified when we add new content. We'll see you next time.